Good evening and Merry Christmas. On behalf of everyone here at St. Albans Episcopal Church, we want to welcome you to our Christmas Eve Christmas Walk, where we're joining with the congregations of First Christian Church, First United Methodist Church, and Bethel Lutheran Church, all here located on Walnut Street, to offer a new way of celebrating this most holy of nights. We're doing it a little bit differently because of a pandemic, as you might have heard. And because we can't have people inside our church, we decided to take our worship outdoors, where God exists just as much as inside. And so I know that for some of you, it's um, nighttime and you don't want to get out, or it's cold. And so we're presenting this to you so you can join in our celebration here. God's worship is for everyone, whether or not we're staying home or getting out. God's worship is for you. St. Albans offering this night, this one of the most holy nights of our church year, a night when the heavens and the earth wrapped each other in a holy embrace to welcome the first cries of a child, the Christ child, who was born this night humbly. God's word made incarnate in flesh and bone so that God could dwell with us, experience life as we experience life, all of our joys and our hopes, our disappointments and our sorrows, in times of good and in times of pandemic, in times when we can gather together and wrap our arms each other in welcome hugs, and those times when we must stay six feet apart. Our offering tonight is a festival of nine lessons and carols, an ancient, well not ancient, a mid-century service that was first developed in England. It begins with a service of light, because that's what Christ is, the light coming into the world to be with us and dwell with us. God loved us so much that God came into this world to be with us, to live as us. And so we want to welcome you. Everything you need, you should have in your Christmas bag. And so we want to welcome you to our church service this night. But now, so that we can begin, let us quiet our hearts. Quiet our minds. Let us prepare to hear those first cries of the Christ child, the child who was born to the alleluias of the heavenly host. Amen. Alleluia, unto us a child is born. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you in the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. If you have your Advent candles, I invite you to light them all. And if you have a Christ candle, light that one as well, as we listen to our opening hymn, Once in Royal David City. <laughs>
beloved in Christ. In this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole church, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for the mission and the unity of the church for which he died, and especially in this country and within this town. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and all those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in this Lord Jesus we, are, we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humble up, humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words of Christ himself, who has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the glory of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. And now let us listen to our lessons and join in singing all the carols. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pishon. It runs through the entire land of Havla, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are there also. The name of the second river is the Gahan. It runs through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Ashur. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Then the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge and of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to, to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Oh 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 15. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you... Eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of the both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put, he put here with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put anonymity between you and the woman, and between her offspring and hers. And he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 5, and 9 through 11. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's, hard, Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall be become level, the rugged plant plains may become plain. And the glory of the Lord will be will, will be revealed 
and all people will see it together. For for the mouth of the Lord, for the for the m mouth of the Lord has spoken. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say, say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and rules with mighty arms. See his reward to them. He, he and his recompense accompany him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them to close to his heart and gently leads those who have those who who those who, that have young Isaiah 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The, master, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make the and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a heart. And the tongue of dumb, wait, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy, for waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground sip springs of water. The haunt of the of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there. It shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not pass over it, and no fools shall shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come 
to Zion with singing, everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Isaiah chapter 7 verses 10 through 15 <clears throat> Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz saying ask a sign of the Lord your God let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven but Ahaz said I will not ask and I will output the Lord to the test then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth 
Two, a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descendant. Oh my God, why is this? Why can't the Bible just talk about him? Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her baby. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger, And suddenly, 
was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times in various ways. But, the, but these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir, appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he has made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things with powerful word after he had profited per perification for sins, he has sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father, or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when, the, when, the, when, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. 
And, and speaking of the angels, he says, um, he makes his angels spirits and, and servants, flames of fire. Um, but about but about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. The scepter of justice will be the will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Um, therefore, God, your God, has set you, you above your companions by anointing you with the with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are you are the work of your hands. reading from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known.
this time if you will find your bells and maybe go outside. Let us pray. Most merciful and loving God, you have made this day holy by the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Grant that we, your people, may enter with joy into the celebration of this day, and may also rejoice forever as your adopted children, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved people, may Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy night, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the good, glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven and earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And beloved, this Christmas Eve night, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Now go outside and ring your bells with the chorus of the angels. Have a blessed Christmas. Amen.